Mayor Red, red is on. Okay. Good evening. So welcome to Thursday, May 3rd. Yes, May 3rd. Selectman's meeting. I'll stand and say the pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing we got is the approval of the minutes for 4 and 26. First page on the good board request by group discussion with Dawson. Um, could we just add? I mean, it, it kind of leaves them hanging as to if any action was taken on that discussion. And the conclusion was that the conversation we take up with the public works director at the time. Could we just add something that lets people know? Second page, first impressions. Um, they recorded the meeting scheduled Tuesday, May 1st. Um, just somehow incorporated in it into a requirement that in order for them to be on the committee, they need to fill out the um, applications, the committee membership applications, and select like an after approval. At this meeting? No, but, but I've mentioned it a couple of times. And it should be in the minutes that we let them know they must do that. They're not going to be indemnified if they don't.
Anything else? We'll make a motion we accept the minutes of Thursday, April 26th as amended. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, the next thing is uh, all state asphalt. So I'll give you a quick rundown here of uh, pavements in general. I don't know how in depth you want me to get with you folks today. Uh, maybe there's a couple opportunities through the UNHT squared program if you're familiar with that program. And uh, I do some instructing for them and they have a class coming up May 31st that you be interested in uh, Road Maintenance 101 which deals in depth with different products and services out there for them. But let's just start by saying that pavement is not what it used to be 20 and 30 years ago. So will you ask me why that is? Well, the crude oil that comes in nowadays, they're trying to squeeze every gallon of gasoline that they can out of that gallon of crude oil. And in doing so, they keep stepping on that gallon of crude and taking the, the light oils out and all the flexible materials out of it. And what's left at the bottom of the barrel is asphalt cement. And years ago, where they didn't utilize that gallon of crude as much as they do today, it was a much more flexible product. So now your pavements are going down on the road, and one year later, what are you all seeing? The pavement color changes. It turns gray really quickly now. It's not as flexible. It gets more brittle and hard. And when the roads start to flex and move and crack, because we have frost up here, and you really can't stop that completely, um, that is happening at a much faster rate than it ever used to be. So now it comes to what can we do about that? Well, you really can't do a heck of a lot about the pavement because of where we're at with that. The oil, the liquids that they're using are the liquids that they're using. Um, so now they're looking at trying to maintain the surface of the asphalt and keeping the sunlight, the air, the water out of the pavement and keep it more flexible earlier in its life cycle. Think of like a house. If you rebuilt a house, you put boards on the side of it. If you didn't paint those boards, what would they do in a very short time? You know, they would change color. They'd get brittle, they would gray, they wouldn't last very long. Well, surface treatments and pavement preservation techniques are all designed to do exactly that. You're keeping the elements from the surface out and keeping it out of that paving structure. So there's several different products and services out there. Uh, and when you hear the word chip seal, well, there's different types of chip seals. There's the conventional single chip seal that's been used for years. There's stuff with fiberglass in it. There's double chip seals, there's the asphalt rubber chip seals, which I've given you for a handout right there. Um, oh God, there's cape seals, slurry seals, we use with other different things. But the state of New Hampshire has used lots of the different things I just mentioned to you, and they have adopted the asphalt rubber chip seal as their spray surface maintenance technique. And it's been something that's been used in the southern part of New England for years, and it's moved its way up north. And the reasons that they're using this product and service, I guess before I get into that, does anybody have any questions about some of the things I've already discussed or comments at this point? Any questions about the asphalt and the pavement in itself? We're all pretty good with that. Well, I have a bunch of questions. Well, I'm free. I'm here. So if you want to bounce them off me, go ahead. Well, I'll wait to the end because some of mine may be. Okay. okay. That's fine. You stop me any time. So the state of New Hampshire, which has done they have the vans that ride around and they maintain research on every single bump, crack, culvert. They know where everything is with the vans. They have it logged and they monitor everything that they use and they have a running record of what's successful and what's not. And they found that this particular product, because when we do an asphalt rubber chip seal, you have the asphalt cement, which is the liquid, and then tires that are blended, ground up tires are blended into that asphalt to give you a really viscous and flexible liquid that they're utilizing, okay? So every mile of road has 1,500 tires that are chopped up and put into that liquid. If you're familiar with uh, the ball fields with the fake grass, you ever seen the black stuff? That's exactly what that is. It's suspended in that liquid. And it's 
producing some more of the carbon black, the flexibility and the light oils, as well as the stretch that you need to uh, prevent the cracking and the flexing that we have in our pavements of today. So when doing that, we're spraying it down at a really high rate per square yard, meaning about six tenths of a gallon per square yard, which is probably double what you'd do in a conventional chip seal. Now it's a good time to talk about the asphalt. Conventional chip seals used emulsions, think salad dressing. Boil water, shake it up, right? You get the two homogeneously mixed. The water will separate out and you get back to the asphalt. That's exactly what an, an emulsion is. It's water and asphalt blended together. The water evaporates. The residual asphalt is left over to hold onto the rock that you're putting down. With an asphalt cement, you're actually putting, with an asphalt rubber, you're actually spraying pure 100% asphalt rubber. There's no cast off of water, so you retain that complete residual to hold on to your aggregate, so it's a thick macadam. Now the stone differs from conventional chip seal, whereas it's run through a hot mix plant, heated and treated with a little bit of asphalt to make it sticky and black, and it's hot. It's put on the site same day, spread with a chip spreader, which you probably can see in the pictures, and rolled same day, and swept same day. So you don't have a waiting time or a curing time with lots of loose aggregate around. So once the stone goes down, the sweepers are working in tandem the entire day. Question. You said it's run through an HMA plant? Yes. What percent AC? Uh, I don't know that. I want to say it's somewhere around three or four gallons per ton, but I don't know percentage-wise. A normal hot mix is somewhere around 12 to 14 gallons per ton. I'm used to the percentage. Okay. percentage is usually what? Probably about four and a half, five percent, five, five, five. Mine is usually five. Five. Your, like your surface is a six. six I could do the math, but yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and then you said it's brought to the site. It's going to be coming at a what? Three hundred or three fifty? It's over three hundred, but I don't know exactly what the. Time How long is. is it on site before it's laid down? Day is of. Sometimes. Well, well, yeah, but the problem is it can go cold quick. Is it a, so it's a, diff, a special asphalt? I couldn't tell. Because if the plant's running the same asphalt, it's going to cool down. I would think I ran a paving crew 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Different kind of set of problems where you have cold hot mix and the way cold, cold hot mix acts where it doesn't bind and flow real well. This stuff has, can even be stockpiled a day or two ahead and then covered and still end up with successful results. Yeah. But most of the time we deal with Continental and they're really good with their trucking. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we deal with Pike, it varies where we are, location, mm -hmm. who's got the best pricing. They'll drop it, we load it in the trucks, we haul it to everything. But the extra heat helps with the, the stone being pushed into the asphalt and then rolled. One of the stock pots, you're going to lose the heat. Is my own. I'm used to you running the truck into the hopper and getting it down hot, hot different type of yeah. process altogether. Because you're spraying that liquid asphalt at six tenths of a gallon and it's really warm and it's sticky. So after it's done, and then the other part of it is the sweeping part of it. Because you are sweeping up immediately, you don't have that loose stone, conventional chip seals required somewhere between two and five days of a cure time to cast that uh, water off into the air and let it set up and cure. Uh, and you have to wait for the stone to stay there before you sweep it. This is a much cleaner product. The stone is black, and you know sometimes people are more acceptable of seeing that darker color as well as a lighter color. Uh, done Route 132, and uh, that up through to Sandrington, right outside of Tilton, going up the hill, and up through there. That the state did that last year. That's an asphalt rubber chip seal as an example. That road was resurfaced two or three years ago, Catherine. What are they doing right now? Yeah. So that one was a relatively new surface. Yeah, they, the chip seal was put on a new asphalt surface. Most of the time we recommend that if you get somewhere between that three and five year window of pavements when you still have that flexibility in the pavement, asphalt is that more flexible at that period of time that you get a lot more bang for your buck than trying to treat pavements that are 10, 12, 15 years old with lots of deficiencies. And most of the time in New England, pavement of that age will have wheel rutting. Uh, and if you're going to use an asphalt rubber chip seal at that price point, the pavement needs to be in good shape and would require some sort of leveling prior to. Uh, 
it's all about equivalent annual cost, meaning this product will last this long and you can divide the cost of that over each year. So if you use it on a road that's further down the curve and is broken up more, your service life is going to be shorter, thus your cost per year will be higher. So you try to use it on payments and that three to five window, three to five year window is a real important window to try to meet while the payments are in their flexible state somewhat. Which is hard to do when you've got the 20 year old or approach you're trying to bring back to standard. Right. You're absolutely right. Thus. But you can't fix every road off in, in one year, so you've got to have something I kind of maintain it until we can get to it. Here's a problem, another thing to talk about is that towns, and some of them with smaller budgets, say you've got 40 miles of road, if you're taking your entire budget and you're rebuilding one mile a year, okay, that's 40 years before you get back to that road. And it's just not a sustainable process of trying to do that. So it's a combination of shimmin overlays, pavement preservation techniques and rebuilds, trying to juggle that whole thing, making it fit for your particular network. Somebody's got to have a question. Alligator cracking. This stuff will outperform a one inch overlay in cracking. Now, that being said, when you talk about alligator cracking, if you have alligator cracking, more than likely there's a couple things going on. The base is deficient, meaning the pavement is flexing a lot in the spring and it's breaking apart. The pavement was put down cold or there was an issue with the aggregate or the, hot, or the, uh, the quantity or the percentage of asphalt in it. Do you agree with that at this point? Age of the road. Age of the road as well. 20-year-old 20, 20 pavement is going to have to show somewhere um, because uh, it, the road in question is basically on a esker. It's just, right. well, it's Manville and all of those. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, it's all the ones that I use, say, I have to use sand on to get it salted. And this we're going to get into with the traction end of it too. Huge difference in traction. It's night and day. It's not even close. The skid numbers are quite much higher. Uh, my driveway's done with. I have an 800 foot driveway right up a steep hill. I've had it with, I've had it without, and there's no question. I've gone for some rides backwards with my tractor, make it part way up, tire spin, all goes away. And I do not use salt on my road. So you've been on the roads in question? Yes, you and I have ridden over them. So, Manville, what would be the anticipated range of extended life? Well, there's a lot of variables with service life of any product and service, but let's talk about the condition to start with, the type of traffic that it sees, and depending on how old that road is, how much has that road moved since it's been put down? You know, I, I don't know. I've seen pavement. I don't know that I, I've seen people rebuild roads, and it's a lot of water and problems underneath. Pavement five years old moves and flexes, but most, if you have a good road and you put this down, you're going to get somewhere at a town level because the town has less plow cycles. Somewhere 10, 11, maybe even 12 years of service out of something like that. Now, if the road's a little further down the curve, obviously you're going to back it off, but I'm going to say, is, which is the one by the auto parts or by the little trailer place? That's that's the trailer. Manville. Manville. So that's, that's down the curve some. It's certainly not brand new pavement by any stretch of the imagination. That's, 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 that's what he's talking about. That's what I'm getting. Um, you don't really need it. So let me ask you. get the, it off the road. There can't be a heck of a lot of traffic out there or truck traffic. The only, you get three uh, M's down there. But there's only like, like, a, it's like three tractor trailers a day tops, I think. It's not a... Uh, so I never saw a car when we were there. Right, yeah. I've been back they since run, I've never run into a car. Three shifts yeah. there, but uh, they only have about three tractor trailers a day, the school buses, and it's only about 50 residents down there, some seasonal, some year round. The state has used this stuff on 8,000 a day. Yeah, this, this is low volume, and it's the trucks on it are going to be low weight other than fuel trucks and plow trucks. Eight years, somewhere in there, depending on what it does. And if the road has And crystal's in better shape. Yeah. Just when you uh, sweep, they never go to the edge. Right. If you take a shovel and follow the pavement, you'll be taken up an inch or so of uh, organic material that's not right. even sweat. And that's real important as a cleanliness prior to. Well, I, I, I want to do the full wet, so. Yeah, yeah. going to do yep. it. Even the dust that's left over, if you ever took like a cup of water and put it on dust, it will stay up and you will know, repel it. Yeah. Same idea with asphalt. Questions? You had questions? Okay. 
So I've been on traditional chip seal roads out west. And, um, yep. Conventional chip seals? Yeah, one of the great things is <coughs> how the aggregate flies off and you know, they lose windshields. And, yeah. And so typically they are using on a low volume or low speed on the 35 number road. Mm -hmm. I'm reading you for sure you're saying. It doesn't, it, it didn't tell me on the speed. It says higher traffic volume roads. But it doesn't tell me what speed. So is it the same with this? If you put it on a we, 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 30 by 5 miles an hour or more, the chances of roads cracking in shape are good. Completely different than the conventional chip speeds because of the sweeping the day of. And we typically will come back with a follow up room after the traffic is starting to need everything in. We sweep the same day, there's not going to be a lot of leftover stone. Right, but these, these roads have been chip sealed you know, long before I got there, and they still have rocks. Which out west? Yeah. But it, it might not have been an asphalt rubber chip seal, it might have been a conventional chip seal. Right, so you're not telling me, you're telling me that this is going to work simply because you're going to sweep it. It's, but it's apples. It's not because it's apples and oranges. It's a different but liquid. you're not telling me it's because of the asphalt. You're telling me it's because of the sweeping. Combination. Keep Combination. The rocks from out. No, no, it's because of the asphalt, and you're, you're, you're because of the rubber in the asphalt. Because of the what? It's not an emulsion. It's an asphalt cement, and you're relying upon temperature drop. Asphalt as it's, concrete. You mean? Asphalt cement. Asphalt concrete. I guess you could call it. You don't remember when Pike ran the emulsion out of their asphalt plants by Camelot? No. Camelot always got uh, everything, got the droplets on them. It made it spider webs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's because of the rubber that you put in? Combination of being the rubber, which gives you the flexibility, and the type of asphalt being sprayed because it's the true asphalt cement. It's the same liquid that's used to make hot top. Mm -hmm. It's Binder. That's technically the binder. That, that's your that's your that's your cement. Yeah. Asphalt cement and cement are synonymous for those. She's concrete. I can live with that. Yeah. She, she's the white stuff. So, chip seals are the most widely used pavement preservation technique in the United States. But there's lots of different ones. Like I said earlier. Right. Right. Traditionally, they. And I know they do a lot of this out west, and the in the states do their own chip seals. And in some places, if they're doing the conventional chip seals where they're leaving the excess stone, you will have stone flying around, especially on higher volume traffic no, roads. No, these roads were swept. They did so sweep, and they, it will still well, cast. Remember Niagara Falls? I lived there for a while. Yeah. They were experimenting. They used um, volcanic rock. Yeah. And they were chip seals. That was interesting. I don't know anything about volcanic and rock. One of them was using seashells. And somebody used a lot of this, but I was talking yeah. to them about it because I thought it was an interesting use of material. Regional usage. And, uh, I think that would be too brittle, which would be the problem. It would break falling apart. Yeah. It, it, that would break that seal. That, that's another yeah. point. So I'll let you finish. The traffic on the road will, you know, the use of the road will loosen the asphalt and the aggregate or whatever is used mm -hmm. from the surface. Yeah. And this one fellow I spoke with said that glass gave him the less problem with that. No kidding. But the lava rock and the regular aggregate continue. I mean, they swept it. So why we're and talking about aggregate? The, but it's the tires itself, the motion of the vehicles that would loosen it. See, all aggregates have what's called an LA, which is a measure of hardness of its aggregate, mm -hmm. right? There's different levels. So if you end up with something with a soft a dolomite or some other type of aggregate that wants to break apart, you could have exactly what you're talking about. With the, the, the rock itself will actually keep breaking off with heavy volumes of traffic or turning traffic. But we have a specification on LA for everything that we have, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, uh, you know, that is supposed to prevent that kind of thing and, and to be within a, a set of specifications. So the product you're going to lay down to have the aggregate stick to it. Oh yes. Is not going to soften in the heat of the summer. It will change. We want it to do something far as softening because the whole idea of this is that when you go through a winter, everything gets cold, everything gets stiff, everything moves, it cracks. 
And then as those cracks develop and the spring comes out and the sun comes out, the traffic will start to knead those cracks back over and it'll heal itself. And it won't happen forever, but it, that's what you'll get. But you're not gonna have asphalt sticking on people's cars or in their houses or anything like that. No, no it's more concerned with it softening and not so that the traffic loose and the aggregate from it. I, I, I don't feel that that would ever be a concern. Okay. And I can work out any of the details with rock cars, extra sweeping, need be at any point in time. Covered by us. Conventional chip seal will also, on poorly drained roads, will seal the water in as well as seal it out. I mean, you know, you must have driven over an asphalt road with cracks and like the water bubble up. Yeah. Come under the yes. So, you know, when you do that, when you have an addition, you have a poorly designed road, poorly drained road, the water needs to go someplace and not stay cool under the road. Water's the key to everything when it comes to road maintenance. And it, it's a number one thing, whether it's ditching and water removal up from underneath your road beds because we have the cold weather that we have. That being said, if you have roads that have water that are underneath them on an annual basis, typically they'll be in such poor shape that they wouldn't be a chip seal candidate anyways. You know, the traffic will push and will rub things out prior to it. And, and I would look at that and say, I can't do anything for you there. When um, we finally get around to having to, you know, redo the road, mm -hmm. remove the asphalt, remove the chip seal, what kind of a problem does that present? I know traditional chip seal, it does present a problem because you don't. I don't see why this would not be reclaimed. Just adding aggregate and asphalt. You could probably uh, coal plane too if you needed yeah. to, and normally they're going to go a little deeper anyways. And yeah, that's, that's well, that's well, that's well, that's well, that's just like anything else. Yeah. An asphalt guy, but you don't reclaim. So, any time that you have pavement and you have whether it's a conventional chip seal or asphalt rubber, you can reclaim and put it back to gravel and have no worries, zip, none. And actually it will be better because whenever you reclaim asphalt, you take the asphalt and you take the gravel and if you've got four inches of asphalt, you go down four inches in the gravel and you comply 50-50, okay? So by having the chip seals on it, you're only adding more asphalt residual to bind that four inches of gravel together and make it more sturdy material. And the reclaimed material has a higher uh, tensile strength than just straight gravel by itself. So the higher asphalt content, the stronger it will be. Now, can, another thing to think about is lots of times when new pavement gets put down, they'll put an asphalt rubber chip seal down over the new pavement and then pave over the top of that and use it as an interlayer, making both the water barrier and a way to adhere the pavement to that second layer as a bonding agent. So there will never be an issue with doing anything you want to that pavement any time in the future. Does Whatever this you want to do. Chip seal end up like this. I really haven't looked at them very clearly. Mm -hmm. Does this chip seal end up looking like a very porous aggregate surface roof? It looks open. It looks a little open. I've, yeah. I've been driving it. It rides nice. It looks open. It will not give you a sh smooth, a smooth finish. You've been on the Vermont interstates, haven't you? They run their uh, their popcorn mix is going to be a little synonymous as a three eight stone and asphalt similar similar and it's similar, a, it's similar kind of look maybe similar. And, and well and also a design for open graded to get the water down through and then drain off instead of ponding. I don't know that this stuff will drain off quite like the gallon graded mixes. Okay. But it will pocket salt re uh, residue and hold on to salt. What stone are you using the three eight or not? So, so is it a three eight stone? Yeah. Okay, so there's some fines, but not a whole lot. Not much. Very, actually, we require very little. So probably a wash stone to get Oh, certainly it is. Yeah. Okay, so if you'd know that, it'd be like you wash three eighths of concrete. The 200 pan or 200 it's sieve is, is really bad. You don't want the silk yeah. the pan is tough on it. Is that one that I don't know. It's like the best road in town. A very long time. That, that, that's that's the way to do it if you've got the funding. I don't and that's going to, that, that whole in the longevity of it all, it's going to save us 
some of the headaches that we're having, like one man is with the sand problem, because the traction is going to be better. We're going to take care of the trees, do the, well, if we decide to do this, and it's, uh, and we're going to really cut back on the sand problem that we're having, too. Plus, you're going to extend your life, your paving cycle life cell further. You know, you're really going to see the difference of how it glues everything together and it maintains that pavement over a longer period of time. Sometimes this turnover in your positions and road agents' positions is turnover, and it's hard to really show that what 10 years from now that pavement's going to look because there's another regime in here. But, you know, I've been doing this since I was 13, and you're going to see a drastic difference if you're using this product. Any kind of surface treatment will, will benefit you, not just this one. So, if it, so you run two rubber tired and uh, steel in your uh, convection? So we don't run steel sometimes on a conventional, sometimes on the rubber, but mostly if the road's in good shape, we'll stick to the rubber because you don't, the steel, if the, if the road's got any kind of deviations, the steel will only ride the high spots. Yeah. No, the rubber's going to do the kneading, which it's helpful, yeah. Just run yeah. three rubber tires okay. back and forth. Back okay, and yeah. Forth. No, I, I, that's what I was looking at, so. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody else have the roof? No other questions? Concrete woman? No, I have Are you in the concrete business? Or know some people? I've been concrete for 40 years. I don't know squat about that. I was a foundation person. I was going to be my son office. I sell calcium chloride. Does that help? Because I use that concrete. I don't think that's going to be friendly. I, just, I, don't, I don't know anything about concrete. Only asphalt. I'm, I'm right over my head. But I have. Do you guys want contact info if you have more questions? Do you want cards? Do you that care? Might. So. I leave them here. You guys can pass yeah. those over. <laughs> so, if you have concerns, you have questions, you have issues, reach out to me. I mean, I'll help you. I'll, I'll advise. I hope you find me to be an honest person. I'll help you any way that I can. I think you might find it beneficial at some point in time to take that class coming up on May 31st. And uh, the commissioner for the state of New Hampshire, I believe she's speaking at it, as well as some of their engineers. And there you go, Catherine. It's an opportunity. She spoke with us last week. We're even going to talk about bridge decks. Maintenance. That's concrete. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. You guys know where to find me. Very good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll take you a little now. Thank you. Bye, guys. Oh, do you want to take I got another thing that I will after you guys discuss this. Is he tied in with Davis and Swanson? His grandfather was at a, at a boss was the one that started the business, and he ended up selling his business to Allstate, and then... Okay, so what's going on? Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, within the next, the, the 25th uh, is start, well, we're in that area, it starts Public Works Week. And I was thinking about whether, if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to put something together for like the schools or something, like a touch and truck type of thing, where we can have the kids come down and look at the equipment and just do something for the community to, oh, yeah. to get them down there and just see everything that we've got and what's going on and, and what we're doing. I'm sorry. Um, I, I would have to be in touch with like the middle school and stuff like that. I probably could get with Peter and he could probably help me with just coordinating some of that. But just to get everybody familiar with what's going on, let them let the kids crawl through the tracks and blow the horn and, and check stuff out. Show them all. Drive them. Show them everything, yeah. Show them everything. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Yeah. So well, and, it's, and the thing is, is our industry is it's getting harder and harder to get people to do what we're doing. So if you get the kids in there and get them involved and see what's going on, and even their parents, so they can see what we, I, I just, when is the <clears throat> that's, that's kind of and just open the, open the place up for people to see what's going on down there, because, I mean, really, if you, you, you say it, like, like, if 
the police make a drug bust, you hear about it. If the fire department puts on fire, you hear about it. But we, nobody hears what we're doing. And Except when you don't. Unless you do it well. <laughs> right, if you're doing something, yeah, if something happens that somebody doesn't like, you hear about it. Yeah. But the stuff that we're doing is, I, I, I just think it's, maybe we'll get, start mixing with the community a little bit and start. And I, I didn't know if that was something you guys would be all right with. There were a lot of hundreds. I think that's great. <laughs> okay. Well, there's the, the week. I have to make sure the exact dates, but I want to make sure. But Public Works Week starts that week, so. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, that's about the demonstrations, and we'll be going to that too. Yes, yeah, that's all that week. And uh, I'm actually, I'm actually, I think we're, uh, I may talk to the guys Monday and maybe we'll enter some guys into the plow rally this year and get, get us doing stuff like that. So, um, I mean, that's just good for, good for town. They do all kinds of competitions where you go with plows and that and backhoes and all that stuff. So there's, there's just all kinds of stuff that we can start getting involved in that we just, it just benefit the town and make things a little better. I mean, we go too far with the debris. The yard cleanup compared to other years. Um, it was it was a little more. It wasn't quite as hectic, but we we got just as much, just as much debris. It was it was a good turnout. I mean, we we put out. I think we filled the MSW dumpsters. We had uh, five of those, and I think we filled them at least twice, maybe three times. The C and D's we filled at least three times. And the brush pile up back is, uh, what we're right here talking about it, we're going to have to figure something out up there because we keep dumping brush back there. We're not going to, we're going to run out of room. That's why I, I, I had mentioned that. I, I went and talked to Joyce, talked with them about getting a burning permit. So I think I, if it's all right to do that, going to start brand days, we'll just start burning some of that brush right back and thinning it out a little bit because it needs it. We're not going to be able to keep going year after year. You're going to run out of room. You can chip it, but it's going to do the same thing. It's better burning it because there ain't nothing, there's nothing left. Unless you offer the chips to residents. Oh. Yeah, but then you then you stop piling chips, and if they don't take them, then you got a mountain of chips that's taking up more room than the brush was. I think burning, to be honest with you, burning is the best way, and just getting it. Okay. I don't think it's so, like. Leaf debris and stuff like that. Well, we we, 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 we turn the leaf pile over, but it's all it's all mixed together, so it's hard to pick the leaves out and pick the brush out. And you get two piles. And yeah, the leaves mulch is a very valuable thing. If it's you know, you gotta, the leaves would have to be put into a separate. You'd have to compost it, right? You'd have to compost it, and, and we we don't have the means to just uh, compost the leaves every time something breaks along. We'll be here uh, almost all the end. But that's all I have. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yep. Main Street looks great in the mulch. Thank you. It looks really nice. We're uh, just for Tuesday. We're going to start sweeping. So we're going to. They're going to be out this early this morning. We're going to do Main Street when nobody's out there. So the cars aren't out there, we're going to get off Main Street, the sidewalks and everything swept up. And then the sweep will be here Tuesday to start getting rid of all the same. So are you guys planning, while it's kind of like the season, are you going to do the same thing with the hours and stuff? Yeah, we've already switched. We switched back, yeah. We switched the first of May was when we, when we started doing the regular hours. Do you know what the state's doing in the sweeping? I've been trying to get information and he came, Bob came, actually came down and said they were going to start doing it at some great off some point but I never got an actual also they just get the roads stuff. It's hard for because I like to try to plant my sidewalks when they're coming through. Yeah. I can't keep wait I can't wait for them to, to do what I gotta do. I gotta get mine done. I won't have everything done by the I mean we're we're doing pretty good. We're pretty much ahead of schedule as far as getting everything done from Memorial Day. So. 
Thank you. Dari. Mm -hmm. Dari, uh, okay. Dari, this is very well done. 
I mean, we, we collaborate with our groups. Okay, both of you, this is very well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody accept it. I mean, we talked about You're it. <laughs> we talked about it. We spent more time talking about it than it did you know, for him just to put it on paper. Nice job. It would have taken me days to write that. Okay, Dan, oh, Pat's not here. I mean, I read this and I didn't see that. Still a good thing. Split. Us. Okay. Leave it to Catherine. I had handed. This is going over a period of time. Stairs and we do this, or you want to just stay up here and it's only take you two seconds to do this.
So ADF is here. Won't consult the carpet unless it's certified as one of three. Okay, the ADF is one of the other ones. When I when I went online, I looked at who's close, who's within 20 miles, and ADF came came up there in Concord. So I and prefer to go with someone who's like close to us. I'm sorry. I prefer to do someone who's close to us. I know the guy from Connecticut said he has people here. Yeah. Home Beautiful has their own group here. They're in Belmont. ADF's out in Concord. The, the person that I dealt with just lives in Belmont. So he looked at all this and he said he could do either. He could do roll carpet or carpet tile. And that's why he gave us three options. The only thing that I'm a little suspect of is he said that, first of all, if he, uh, option number one, if he uses the roll carpet, he's going to try and reuse the carpet pad. That's his yeah, what? That's, that's like yeah. the grossest part of the carpet. Yeah, that's just gross. Why do you think Who's I want tile? Who said that? ADF? ADF. When you change your clothes, wouldn't you change your underwear too? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you didn't. Oh, you just flip them inside out. Okay, so they're for another 20 years. Okay, so let me do So ADF, the second one, is that he wasn't going to do any subfloor preparation to install the carpet tile, whereas Higgins, that's the first thing they do. They do all, they rip up the, get rid of the carpet pad, and they clear the carpeting, and they put down all the new um, underwear. Okay, so the carpet tile from ADF is option two? Yes. And that's keeping the ceramic tile. That's why it's cheap. Oh. And then is there one? Is and then the, the third one is carpet tile with the VCT and keeping with the well, does it make sense? So ADF3 matches Home Beautiful. Right. Except it's carpet tile, right? Carpet no, no. ADF3 oh, right. yeah. number one matches yeah, Home Beautiful overall, yeah. with the exception of removing the carpet, the ceramic tile. Which I did see note two, he said, uh, number one, Paul said, okay, to keep the ceramic tile in the lobby, but just to always reduce the cost from 290. So if we wanted to keep the ceramic tile, and this is ADF number one, it would only be 18,000. So I'm hesitant to go with somebody that. Suggested well, we, just, keeping the <coughs> reusing. Yeah, and it, does he gonna see enough to be watched? You know what I mean? Like that kind of is shady work. And he also said I, said it's quicker to do the roll carpet. Can we call Home Beautiful and say, look, we got two others, but we'd like to go with you guys. We've used your caps or whatever. Could you match this? Because we don't have. A a price from Home Beautiful to do carpet tile. We don't have a price from, well, he gets only does carpet tile, right? He gets only does carpet tile. So if you're going to remove, eliminate this one, and you've left with these two, you've got apples and grapefruit. Right. So Home Beautiful one and ADF one. But you said Home Beautiful would give you a price on carpet tile. Here's one yeah, that he just has it yet. With but it. we don't, we want, we don't want to go, no one thing about the carpet Tile huh? is that no one no, no, no carpet throughout I'm against oh no carpet at all throughout the whole no we had areas we said we wanted tile I want tile you want tile throughout no not necessarily we had areas of carpet and areas of tile I want to stick to that well that's what that's what number ADM number one is areas of roll carpet areas of VCT uh, Higgins is only carpet tile isn't it you said. Yes. That's all they do. So yes. there's no VCT tile. Correct. So he should be tossed. And then what you've got to do with tossed. Home Beautiful is get the VCT so you can compare to ADF3. Carpet tile, VCT. And since okay. Home Beautiful said it's probably going to be more, you'll be in that range of ADF number three is my guess. Okay. 
I'm sorry, when you said no carpet tile, you meant you wanted VCT throughout. Okay. No. I lost on the tile throughout. I'm sticking to what we said was going to be carpet and what's going to be tile. Okay. That's my vote. Is it, is I don't right. care. And that's the original whole beautiful quote that we got. It is ADF floor. Except for they're using one. rolled and we're now trying to look at. Yeah. ADF floor to Yes. Because your advantage with the tile is if you get one torn rip somewhere, you replace a tile. If we have a car, well, and. Hopefully so, they don't feel like the high school right, library and say, yeah, you know, random pattern. One and ADF one are exactly the same, with the exception of, uh, yeah, they do do the quarter inch for the VCT, the, and that's exactly what the original bid was, was parking the offices, VCT in the meeting room, the hallways, and then taking out the ceramic tile and putting in the VCT. The difference is, is that I can't believe you want to reuse the pad if possible. No. So, so we problem. assume this price doesn't include a new pad. <laughs> yes, it does not. He said. So he would have to include that one. Yes. Which one do you want? ADF. ADF so one. we can't make a decision until we get something from the home vehicle. But I thought for carpet tile. We know that's going to be more money than the whole Right. Market. That's what you want. But it's right? easier to maintain over the life if you have problems in it. We should wait for Tom to make this decision. Well, what, what they would be quoting on is you'd be doing Home Beautiful's carpet tile with ADF number two carpet tile. Why he, his carpet tile is so much less. Oh, and that's the other thing. Oh, there's he's not, not, there's he's no VCT. Not his, he's not doing any, um, I'm sorry, his number four. Three. Three. He's number three, number four. Yes, he's, he's VCTing the top, the, putting subfloor under the VCT. Right. So, those would be so we just need to hear from home vehicle. Okay. Hopefully, Pat's with us. So, Home Beautiful has included new pad of the beef. Yes. They were to install carpet and synthetic pad. There it is. Rip up existing carpet and disposal. Yeah. I assume that ripping up the existing carpet includes ripping up the pad with it. So, yeah. it's just going to put down new pad. Yeah. New pad. Screw down areas of squeaks. Screw down areas of squeaks. Is that what's going to do? Screw down areas of squeaks. Yeah, we'll go on. So, he put that in the boat? No, he, he added that. I said, so I don't get it. You walk the board down and it stops it. the board from flexing and stops your sweep. So so he's at $150 and so when he gets a quarter inch plywood down, he's going to walk around and if he gets a sweep, he's going to put another screw in. Well, I yep. can not want I like the squeaks. I don't know how it's completely hard to feel, so I don't have a sweep. They probably do squeaks. No, that's great. No way. No, you're scared. So, can we recap? Okay, so we don't need to know anything extra from home No, we do. I mean, no, for this, you're looking for another bid from them. Yeah. But for, for this bid, it looks complete. I've never had this done. Like I said, I've never had to put my house to the bottom. So, everything here that needs to be done is there. Yes, with the exception of that I noted that ADF is going to be using the pad. And if we were going to go with the tile, I was concerned that he wasn't going to do anything about the sump floor. He was just going to, like, wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more so you still want me to get him to give us a tile? Yeah. Well, that way, we've got want something to we can go apples to apples at least. Yeah. I don't want rolled, so. And take out the screw, screw them down the squeaks. Oh no, that's of course. Yeah, that's fine. That's a, that's a but, um, standard yeah, if we're going to compare ABS number one to Home Depot's, have, have him include another pad. And and have it that you want another pad. Well, I'm not, but you can. I'm not. What? I'm not doing rolled. I'm an O on rolled. I'm doing with the tile. 
I thought ABS number one was comparable to Home Depot's carpet and tile. I'm beautiful. I mean, Home Depot. I understand. If you want to go rolled, you guys can. I'm on no vote on the roll. That's all. I'm letting you know it in advance. Isn't is was... Home Beautiful's bid on rolled yeah, carpet? carpet? That's why we're asking for the tile, carpet tile from them. All right, let's just get it. We need Home Beautiful to give us a quote on the tile. Yeah. That's it. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get an under an under pad on the English. Yeah, I want to see how that price is. All of a sudden, it's twenty. I mean, they're they're. At least I can compare yeah. the bids. You're gonna bring up there a little bit. Well, also, I just don't understand why on ADF third carpet tile is the same carpet tile. It's so much less of your option to Because the quantity that they buy. Because VCT oh, is that's, price up. That, that's VCT, what he exclusively deals in. Yeah. The, the VCT it isn't necessarily more expensive, but it's a lot more labor intensive to put it down. Mm -hmm. See if they blew it and get it all. It takes longer. You've got to make sure that underlying is supposed to be flat and solid. Is the potential thing with the VCT is that over time the tiles show up. So okay. these, these are, um, they all, the ones that did VCT, they all did on the strong. And the carpet. Is it the VCT? Yeah. yeah. And then this is the ADF, their carpet tile. So this would be the hallways and the lobby. This heavier. JJ Impulse. Is it going to be green? No. What type of this? Is this for the, the one this? On carpet tile? No, but on that, yes. You have to strip and wax it every year. Every spring? You have VCT over the PV, right? Mm -hmm. Strip and wax once a year? Yes. Does it look good? Yeah, they do a great job. And, and uh, behind you, I think it's good. Does it, uh, should it be more than once a year? Or? Mm -hmm. And there's the book of the JCT. So we were talking about having the hallway and the meeting room work. Yeah, I think it depends on the traffic. You know, like downstairs doesn't get as much traffic as upstairs, so downstairs once a year is fine. But I think that main hallway upstairs would probably be better twice a year. So we probably last longer. But if you do put like a runner. Yeah, yeah which we do, yeah. Okay. Um, we're scheduling the closing for May 17th. Yeah. Um, all of um, I haven't. He just handed this to me today. That's all of his expenses, his hits. I'll scan that and send it to all of you. Um, he's holding the thousand dollar deposit. As soon as we get the HUD statement, um, then we approve it, and then. Um, do you want Scott at the closing, or we can just do it ourselves? Can we name him? He said it's up to you guys. He's just going to stand there while we sign all the documents? Yeah. He's going to sign all the documents. Okay. And, uh, same, and same with uh, Greg. Do you need Greg there? Because what we can do is, if the, with the HUD statement, the sooner I get that, we'll go ahead and prepare all the checks, and he can get his transfer done. And I don't think we need it. That's just okay. No, I, I agree. I think we're good. So, um, and what I thought we'd do is we could open up the selectments meeting and then we could recess and it'll take maybe 20 minutes. Or you could just yep. recess later in the meeting. Yep. If, if no one else is going to be here for that, you can recess later in the meeting. What's, What's the meeting date? 17th. Oh, That's probably later in the night, though. We have a public hearing for CDG next week. The following week there is nothing, which is the 17th. The following week, the 24th, is the public hearing for the And um, I called the plumber. He hasn't called me back yet. Um, the park won't turn the water back on until someone goes out and checks to make sure that all the faucets are closed and that there aren't any plugs that need to be put back in. And I don't know exactly what the person did or he <laughs> what winterized it so they don't want to turn the water in until someone goes in. It's there inside to make sure it's not like a it would flood. So of course six AM. 
So um, I'm waiting for the plumber to call me back. If you can just tell me what he did or where, if there is a plug out, just tell me where it is. Did we have a plumber going there? Yeah, they blew up the pipes. And it, it did involve crawling underneath the skirt because I was there because uh, I had to open it up. Gil, 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 Is the um, oh on the Geico plane? I heard back from Primex, and she um, called their adjuster. Okay, and one of the things she discovered, she says in regards to the options, because I had sent some options, but she came, she found this. It says when you're dealing with commercial con um, insurance companies like that. I mean, this isn't a house, this is a government business. There is a clause in the New Hampshire insurance, insurance regulations that says that anybody doing insurance in the state has to be willing and able contractors and repairs other than motor vehicle. Every settlement made or offered upon the basis of an appraisal conducted on behalf of the insurer relative to property and liability insurance shall include a written statement that if the claimant or insured cannot find a contractor or repair to do the repair or replace the damaged property for the price quoted. Our price quoted was 9,800, and they were only going to pay 32.45 because they thought it could be done in two days. Then the insured or claimant may request that the insurer shall supply to the insured or claimant the, with the name and address of any known, recognized, competent, and conveniently located contract or repair who is ready, willing, and able to repair or replace the damaged property with other of like kind of quality mm -hmm. price so, so what did they say? Did you call them and say? No, I haven't yet because I don't want to talk to you guys. Geico can be challenged on finding someone to do the repairs for the amount they've offered. I highly doubt they'll be successful with maybe to them paying the total amount presented. So that's the option that I would bring this oh. to their attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second thing that they'd be willing to do is, or uh, what Geico said, you see we already uh, received the 62.96.30 to buy the, the materials. So Geico advised that you can pay them back the 62.96.30 and pursue damages with Primex. We would have an adjuster go out to document and write up an assessment of the damages for recovery purposes, and we pay you based off that estimate less the thousand dollar deductible. So they want our no, insurance to pay yeah. us for the damage when it was. That's They're insured that caused the damage. Insurance scams 101, just like if you're yeah, in a car accident. Nuts. The other, and you call, I've dealt with Geico before, like 15 years ago, and they wanted me to make a claim with my insurer. Well, why would I do that? That goes against well, us. That would go against us. Right. But what Primex would then do is pursue Geico for the total cost of repairs and look to reimburse us for the $1,000 deductible. Yeah, no, I don't. Guy goes and she gave me the mail. Can't we do both? Can't you try the first and if that fails, go to the second? Sure. She says, I believe these two options may be more timely than pursuing the claimant in small claims court uh, for total cost repairs or, or hiring a public adjuster would also be more timely, but you would also reduce your settlement amount when possible. Please let me know what the town decides. So what the town decides is they want me to send a letter to Geico to try to find something so locally. One? Yeah, if you could, I'd like to see this like set up. If you could not send a letter to call, yeah. is there someone you Well, I will have to, 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 well, if I email, I've got to do it in writing, so. Yeah, yeah, do yeah, that also. Just, like. The other thing to put in the letter is that we are concerned that with the season law and children playing in the park and the missing things, that there's a very serious safety and would we be would they cover for injuries or something, you know? But, but you know, just seeing that it's a it's a safety issue now because people are using the park. 
I'm not sure if Mrs. Brockman was here and I forgot if they have repairs to the ball or insert is. If they repaired officially, that. You've officially asked him to do that? I thought we said that several times. Yes. <laughs> At this meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, a couple of times. Not with him, but with you. And I brought it up um, on site with him when we were over there. They had Anderson week last week and they hadn't given it. This has been three months. Like, and, and I, I called him um, from the park because we had the BEA time. And uh, I have to keep relocating cone on the whole. So you can look at the end. It's a safety issue. So can you let him know? I've, I've sent an email out to the park commissioners too. I've been I'm sure I've sent him one. You're welcome. And um, I spoke we'll get a consensus in an order that follow. Well, we might have. But you were going to order it. You I ordered the ball. Right, but there's, I need to have that hole ready for the baller to go in. Okay. I'm also not going to do it without a consensus from the commissioners on to, because we had a discussion back in November, I believe, about doing a taller one that was more noticeable. So I sent that out. They're going to meet next Monday night. I, I guess that's up to you. If you're drunk and running into the park, you're going to get a tall one or a short one. No, because when people, um, some we've had occasions where some people were back in there to unload and then ran into the body because well, they can't see it. They, they that would be good. Nice. They don't look at <laughs> her. Have you done it? It's a 30 inch baller, that's what was there. That so was we figured, you know, why well, would we'll replace it with a child one and that way there's no excuse. Okay. So, so would you please? Yes. Call him tomorrow and tell him it, it really is important that they get that ready so that as soon as we get that bottle, we can fill that hole. I am so afraid of the child's going to put a foot in there. I think we just. Wow, we're way past. Yeah, sorry. All right, uh, let me watch. You're next. Okay. detectives to process and get ready to part-time dispatchers. He got one done, but then he got really busy with cases, and he finally recently finished the second one. trying to get ready for uh, summer vacations, you know, pay time off, that sort of thing, and to uh, keep overtime down. Uh, we, we know that we'll need to. We have one right now. And um, this uh, second applicant applied a while ago. She's, she's actually full-time with LF Dispatch and has been since 2015. Um, she's local, went to high school here at Winnesquam. Lives in Belmont, um, married, just recently had a baby. Her husband's a police officer as well. And um, she's well liked, well respected. I know that uh, he visited Belknap Dispatch. One, got the approval that we could use a part time from the sheriff. And then two, um, you know, checked and, and all the evaluations came back great. You know, he, he couldn't find any reason uh, why we couldn't add her as a part-time dispatcher. She's well liked by all the officers at the PD, uh, well liked by our other dispatchers and well respected. She does pop in occasionally to say hi. She really is fond of our PD and um, she's wanted to work part-time for a while, but uh, she 
when she first um, approached Detective Buffington, she was, um, in, you know, uh, uh, pregnant and getting ready to deliver a baby. So um, uh, now she's ready, and, and Detective Buffington would like to start to train her before summer gets here, which is right around the corner. So he finished the uh, background, and we were hoping to um, begin training her next week. So we brought a, a PAR down to. Any question that we can hire Smith and Nikoski as normal Nikoski as a part-time education specialist with some physical? Second. Cost for, um, yeah, we have motions that we discussion. Any cost for the training? No, it would be in health. She already has all the state certifications through Belknap, and, and because she's full-time with them, she'll have to continue to keep those certifications up for them as well. So we're kind of benefiting from the training she's it's getting from them. Right. They use the same system as we do, so it's really just some of the things we do in house might be different. And I spoke with Pat earlier, she said she was in favor of the hiring part time. So because it would be cultural use of the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those? Oh, Thank you. Bigger stuff, they'll pull him in, even though he's new. But he's still kind of in training as well. I know he just went to their basic and advanced school down in Rhode Island, and so he's kind of still on in a training mode with them. But the big stuff, they pull everybody in. What I, I don't know if anybody else saw that in the paper. It's great news for us too. He covered. Yeah, that comes under, those are OCDEF cases, organized uh, drug enforcement cases, and those involve the U.S. Attorney's Office, the DEA, ICE, everybody gets involved, the FBI. New Hampshire didn't have an OCDEF unit until maybe about three years ago, and, and now we do based out of Manchester. So it's good for the high-level cases. Yeah. Our detectives actually work under OCDEF on grants, so they're involved with it through the DEA. Services 
state level. And, and you know, quite frankly, what's the harm even if there's children involved? involved? But for me, it's health In the car, so like, they, they have running water. Yeah, where's the hygiene? Isn't that where? a lot of it the Are we well in unit? Are there kids there? Um, in this one and one previously, I understand there are children involved. But, so the, we really don't have any direct avenue of the person has been offered, you know, a shelter, refuses. There's been a lot of offers made to this person to get them out of this situation so they're not living in a car on the street. But there's no clear avenue we have to say you cannot live on private property in a town of Tillman Park. So that's the property owner you know, says that trespassing? Right, right. You know, I mean, that's what we'd have to look at, you know, if they have any known information. No, no, we'd have to do well being Do you know of a town, any towns, or any departments that have passed ordinances that. Oh, yes, absolutely. What about local governments? I'm not going to ask that. I am. Ready? No, I don't. I don't know. I mean, we could certainly. We can always do a well being check on the family within that. They are. And, and I think I know one of them. Yes, I called and asked if they would do that because when I heard children were involved, I just felt it's the least we could do to make sure they're at least safe. But it's hard because also you don't want to give them the you know, belief or the feeling that they're being protected so they right, can right. stay there. <laughs> um, you know, in one instance when I notified the property owner, I mean, they were out of state, out of New England, and you know, their comments to me is what harm are they doing? But the neighbors were very concerned because other activities seem to be taking place there. So property owners aren't always helpful. In this most recent case, I'm pretty sure the property owners are probably isn't aware of what's going on. But if we had some sort of ordinance that would allow us to say, you can't continue to live here but we can get you into a shelter, then they may be pushed into taking take the shelter, which is a much safer alternative. So they're much more You see what I'm saying? If they can't stay there, we can absolutely say you can't stay here, then maybe we can get them into a safer place. Thank you. Yeah. It's one thing for an adult to choose to do that on their own and not go to a shelter. But when you bring kids into it, it's really got to go back. Yeah, so thank you for the look into that. Great. Tell the guys thank you for checking on that. Okay, so I think we have left um, selectman's reports. And uh, Peter, what are you I'm good. Peter's good. Um, Almost up. I just took care of what I need. Okay, well, I had Peter, I mean, uh, to ask for assistance for a slide thing. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the pictures. I said, no. I oh, yeah, we need to look at those. It's a lot worse than I thought. I thought it was just the guardrails. Have you sent them to the uh, district's group? Just from yesterday. I don't know what to do, but. Um, it's going to forward it to the commissioner, but I think this is the issue. But I, I think it, it's. Um, there's areas that the, the whole guardrail is washed out, and it's washed out right to the edge of the street. The wall has washed out. So and it's there's a bunch of sinkholes stay on the pavement and well, I, <laughs> while the paint's still there but um yeah it's up so yeah that, that too so um you know, 
prepare to get a copy of that and send them off to DOT with the uh, presentation that we put together. Yeah, it's just slideshows. It's great. I, the pictures were incredible. I'm just kind of wondering what the heck you were when you were taking them. Well, oh, I was a little He's nervous. Quiet. You know, I wasn't worried about falling. I brought my phone along. <laughs> but that's not There's not much shoulder there. Um, but that's something to District 3. They're pretty good at that. I mean, make something that obvious in the air. Because quite frankly, when the day we were out in the rain, they didn't see what you showed us. Can we send it to those people? Joyce said she was going to. Uh, response. I thought she said she no. was going to. Yeah. Oh, Joyce was a response to the one to Bison? Yes, the oh, okay. commissioner's yes. office. She responded to it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I can follow up with the call, too. Yeah. Well, like I said, they should go to District 3, because I'm sure they're aware of it. Well, like, today we had a really good rain, and we should have pulled it up I never have to do it with you. Do you have anything? Each time it rains, it's washing more out behind the wall. Uh, the other thing is going along the other side of the road that, and I, I took some pictures so next week, the Tilton School Snowball Center is fun part, and there's places that are scraped out of it along the top of it, so. No, it's just popping. So anyway, um, I think you know, we might want to make the school aware of it because it, they might start losing their walks and then we get back and we might want to get on it. So I'll send the pictures for next week. Do we have to make a motion? No, Send us something in writing saying that? Is there something they signed? There's an original agreement that the board didn't sign. We know this. And it was that when you said that's not, we can go with the original agreement. Um, but I wanted to, I asked 
them if you would get a copy of the signed quote that they're using. <laughs> that makes sense. So I just wanted you to know that I... Great. Why, is that, why would you sign a quote? Why would you sign, sign a quote? Because we didn't sign a quote. I guess so we'll anyway, find I out next week. I just wanted you to know how this all came about, mm -hmm. but I just asked them to do that. So yeah. hopefully by next week we'll have a complete story. I'll try and find out because actually nobody anybody as an agent for the town today on the current date, that would be great. And that's what happened the last time. We don't need it, so. And we ended well, up with sorry. something. Not that we put it down. I have to tell that the terms and that if we are going to be under the first original agreement, the terms are much better than the second. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to ask him for a copy of the original agreement for the very first time.